All right. Got some lead solder. People love lead solder. This is 6040. Not for use in the EU. Americans only. Um, it's got lead in it. It's not lead free. It's super skinny. As we go back to the previous image, you'll see very fine pitch. It's 0.3 millimeters, so very thin. This is a good for surface mount, um, especially it's leaded. It's good for surface mount. We work. Again, it's leaded, not lead free. But if that's what you want, uh, you've come to the right place. Next up, uh, this is a major key alert. We've got key switches. So this is um, a lock that has a key that goes in it. You get two keys. You can see on the next image. And uh, I'll show it on the overhead. When you insert the key, you can turn it and set it to off, or you can set it to be on. And on the back are two contacts, and when it's on, these are two or mechanically connected. It's like a it's like a switch. Like press a, pretend you pressed a button or flipped a lever, and when it's off, they're open. So you can use this as sort of an on-off switch, or a signal, you know, detector, whatever, or mode selector. But you get a key, so it's kind of like cool because you can like lock the system. You can keep people from messing with it. Uh, only thing to mention is every lock has the same key this is like a not in any way a secure system it's also trivial to pick so think of it as sort of a fun interface not as like something to secure you know something of value like your your crypto wallet or what have you um you drill a for quarter props inch. and stuff like yeah that. for props and, and and you know other fun things i of course left the uh nut on yeah the nut is included you drill a quarter inch hole in your um panel looks like about like a quarter inch thick and you can panel mount it very easily and then just solder to the uh yeah the contacts on the end this is cool you're gonna be able to do a lot of neat like control boards and all yeah. sorts of stuff like that okay next up okay next up um we had a request to get basically what are called like hammer headers or press fit headers into the store um i'll say that you know there's a there's a couple warnings these are not magical they don't solve all your problems um they're definitely fun comes in a strip of 36 pins the issue is that you have to then insert them and they're press fit and you can't like hand press fit. So you have to use pliers to do it. And it's like, you have to get a little bit of practice. So don't expect that you'll be able to use like every single pin. You might have to try one or two times until you get the hang of it. Um, but I can try doing a live demo. Um, so I grabbed the wrong board, but maybe it's okay. So yeah, go to the overhead okay so i usually don't do this many pins but maybe i'll do like eight pins so you can too risky live demo i know it's kind of risky so i think i got the right number yeah there you go so if you tried to um press fit this you, you can't it's actually like your your hands can't do it you can't even do it like this you can't like press down you do need to use pliers and you can sort of like that's not too bad slowly work your way down the yeah, row something like press fit solder free headers yeah and then when you're done you'll see they're like a little bit uneven then that's when you would yeah then you then you can press you can try to press to, to flatten them or you can you know you can um that's try yeah. yeah you can try pushing each pin in and so when you're done um as, as long as you see all the holes coming out that mean and you know this is not quite perfect but it's good enough um this is actually quite solid so it's in so i'm just going to warn you you, ha you know it takes a little bit of effort to get the hang of it but uh it does work and then you can um snap these apart up to you know 36 pins so you snap as many as you want um and then when you're done some people ask can you solder them yes you can just solder it when you're done and then you have like a really good mechanical connection um but if you want to, you know you can pull them out too um i would recommend you pull it out pin by pin there you go just yank it out and then you know it's kind of destroyed it. but um yeah and then after you push the pins in of course use um a multimeter to check the continuity to make sure that you really got it all wedged in um all the way all right cool all right next up okay next up uh, by popular demand, we now have a tripler for the Raspberry Pi Pico series. The Pico, Pico W, Pico W with headers, Pico H with headers, um, and Pico Bells. So um, you can now 
have two accessories or like one accessory and just a lot, a lot of extra prototyping space um, for your Raspberry Pi Pico boards. And we add all these little extras as well. So if uh, you can either go to this image or you can go to the overhead and I'll point at all the things. Okay. Um, so you can, all the uh, pins are duplicated across. So like, you know, you can use any slot. All, all the slots are the same. And the Pico goes in the middle. Probably should grab one. And then you have an extra row on the outside of each one. So these are nice, uh, solid mechanical connections. Um, all the pins are labeled on the side here. So you can see all of them and on the back as well. No, actually, sorry, they're not. The um, But they use the, what pins are available on the connectors are on the back. Um, and then you've got Stemma QT connectors. So you connect I squared C sensors, uh, quick or Stemma or, you know, PI Co or whatever you want to call them. Anything that uses the JST four pin connector. You have a NeoPixel connected to pin AD2, which you can cut the trace if you don't want the NeoPixel. Um, battery charging. So you can add a LiPo battery here and this is a charging circuit. It will automatically charge through the Raspberry Pico's USB. Uh, you have um, two status LEDs as well, green and red. Green means it's charging, red means, sorry, orange and green. Orange means it's charging, green means it's done. You can uh, change the rate. By default, it's 500 milliamps, but you can cut and uh, this trace to make it 250 milliamps. You can also disable the charging. So if you want to run your project off of AA batteries, uh, so you obviously don't want to charge them because they're not uh, rechargeable LiPo. Uh, cut this trace to uh, disable the charging and um, enable switch. So with this switch, you can enable and disable the three volt power supply. So this this switch connects to the end pin over here, which is the, the built in enable reset button does exactly what you think. You can reset your Pico because there's not a reset button. And then um, everyone's favorite, the iSpy connector. So this is a very skinny it looks like it's too skinny but it is a full iSpy connector um, on the end here that allow you to connect tft displays and the pinout is labeled over here so use a lot of pins you've got spi on 18 19 and 16 the data uh, data command and tft chip select on 20 and 21 um, a lot of our breakout boards for tfts have an sd card you have the sd chip select on 17 if there's a touch screen on the SPI port, uh, chip select is on 15, interrupt on 22, and the backlight on A0. So you'll notice the reset and busy pins aren't connected. So this is not ideal for e-ink displays, I'll say. It's just, I, I couldn't route it, and there weren't enough pins, and I sort of you know decided uh, most people wanted TFTs anyways. Um, so you can use, you know, you don't have to use all the slots if you just look, oh, I like the iSpy connector, put your Pico in the middle, and then you get all these fun accessories, and, and you can um connect wires to all the uh pockets if you'd like all right and then tonight to start our slides you lady to our team our community all people who share open source and make the world a better place to bring people together through science and technology and engineering and more is da -da -da. it's the trrs trinky for assistive technology shown here with the xbox oh you can you um show the top because the Oh yeah. The, keys, the the letters aren't visible. Oh well. You know what I mean? Like it's cropped. Oh, it's cropped out. That's why. Yeah. Oops. Okay. Yeah. So you can see uh the A when they press the A button, the A gets typed, and when they press the B button, yeah, the, the B gets typed. Even zoom in now, so it's right here. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um so this is a uh programmable SAMD21 uh, Trinky board with a nice uh, USB-A connector. It's got um, like a reset button, so you can enter in a bootloader. You can program it with Arduino or CircuitPython. There's a little stem QT port, a NeoPixel, um, USB-A jack. You can use an adapter if you have a C port. And then uh, most interesting is the TRS connector with switch on two switches on the tip and ring. Um, contacts so that you can detect when it's been plugged in um, and a uh, nice mechanical connector as well. And all of the pins from the TRS jack are connected to analog inputs on the SAMD21. So no matter what kind of accessibility, um, sorry, assistive, I see it's accessibility, assistive tech switches you're using, um, whether they're like potentiometers or you want to use a splitter to connect multiple uh, buttons, you can connect up to 
three switches or two potentiometers or like one potentiometer and one switch because you have four contacts and they're fully configurable. Um, and the idea here is that you would be able to reprogram this to, to customize it with Arduino or CircuitPython. So it doesn't come with like a scripting language or like a desktop program to configure it. It's kind of your, you know, whatever your dream is, you can make it happen. Um, but it's like open source hardware and it's inexpensive. So if you want to make a custom design that uses like cording or maybe uses other I squared C sensors for a combination of having AT switches and maybe like a sip and puff sensor, um, this is a little board that you can very easily uh, get up and running. It's minimal and you plug it right in so you don't need any extra cables. Um, and with Arduino or CircuitPython, you can very easily um, program it and configure it, use it with your mobile device, use it with desktop. So um, hopefully this will make it very easy for people to do AT switch projects without needing like any wiring or um, like a separate Arduino or cabling or whatever. It's all, all, all in one, very compact. And uh, check out whatever Bill is going to do with this is probably what you want to do with it. <laughs> so uh, AT makers, um, this is kind of made for them. So. But I think also like anyone who is like, oh, I want to add a switch input. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like you you don't necessarily you know you don't necessarily need to have a uh, AT project for it. Um, yeah. You know, there's get tons of ideas. Like, oh, I want to just add a switch input, and I want the switch to be made out of like you know two pieces of cardboard with laminated tin yeah. foil, you know. And uh, if you're in Discord, or I'll just repeat it now so you can hear this, um, Bill says it can completely emulate the Xbox adaptive controllers input to make it super handy. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, you can basically, because it's a full Sandy 21, you can have it act like any device. You can have it yeah. act like a MIDI device. You can have it, you know, talk to Android or iOS or what have you. Um, it's, it's you know, fully open source and programmable. So uh, a customizable solution and, you know, we're going to publish the files. So you never have to worry about this technology um, getting discontinued. You'll always be able to make it. Okay. And that is new products for this week. Okay. New, new, new.